Wednesday, 15th of February, 2017, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So I like to talk about the markets a little bit, precious metals and Bitcoin, and the Federal Reserve and recessions. And uh, I'll start out with the markets. Uh, right now, it's uh, quarter past 8 a.m. London or uh, quarter past uh, 3 uh, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, gold right now is 12.25, down about three dollars. Silver is at 17.86, down about 10, and that's from the uh, 6 p.m. Uh, closing time, London. Uh, sorry, 6 p.m. closing time, New York, on uh, Comex. So uh, Bitcoin right now. Let's have a look. Uh, trading a thousand, around a thousand and six, so Bitcoin still above a thousand. Um, stock market: the Dow is up twenty-seven points, to twenty thousand five two five. S and P twenty-three thirty-eight up about only a point. Um, like to talk a little bit about the technical picture uh, for gold, silver, and Bitcoin, and I'll start out uh, with gold, and I'll bring up a chart here that you've probably seen already. Uh, it's a daily chart going back to uh, about 12 months. Uh, I've done a retracement from the high last year at around 13.75 to the low uh, in December this year around 11.22. You can see the 50% uh, per retracement of that move is uh, 12.48. Uh, we got up to just about uh, around 12.45 last week, and then we've come down, and uh, we've tested 12.20, which previously I've said is uh, important, uh, you know, was an important resistance earlier uh, in January, and then uh, I said we needed to break that, and once we broke that in the beginning of February, you can see we, we went almost straight up to that 1245 level. Now it's held a few times here at uh, 1220. So 1220 is a key support and it seems to be holding it. Yesterday, I think the high was 1234. Uh, and then we, we came back down quite sharply during uh, Janet Yellen's uh, testimony to Congress. So uh, yeah, I think as long as we hold and close above 1220, Things still look pretty good. We need to get uh, back above 12, you know, next really target would be 1248, uh, 1250. That trend line you see uh, on top there, that's from the high in 2011. And you can see that last year we, we broke above that line a few times, but we were unable to stay above that line uh, for a considerable time. Uh, right now, it's just below 1300 that line. So uh, that's the technical picture for, for gold. Uh, let's look at the silver chart now. Bring up the silver chart. So the silver chart is a weekly chart. And uh, you probably, I, I showed you this chart uh, a week or so ago, maybe a little longer ago. And uh, very clear trend line there. Um, coming through uh, good resistance from since you know july the high above 21 in july last year and uh, this week we're clearly above that line uh, we've been above 18 uh, right now we're below 18 so uh, as long as we stay above that line which probably comes around uh, 1760 or so uh, this week uh, it looks still pretty good silver uh, I know it's been frustrating this this week. Uh, gold hasn't seemed to uh, been and silver haven't seemed to be able to make a move higher. But uh, sometimes markets need to uh, you know gather energy to go uh, you know higher or lower <laughs> if it's a bear market, of course. So uh, Bitcoin here. Um, this is a long long term chart in Bitcoin weekly chart. Uh, yeah, still looks fairly good. Same uh, kind of uh, scenario as I spoke before. Uh, seems to be uh, that trend line above is around 1,075 right now. 
but I still think we could consolidate further uh, before breaking uh, and making new highs. We could even come back, you know, to 850 and would still be in good condition, you know, good shape technically, in my opinion. So that's Bitcoin. Uh, so earlier in the video, I said I wanted to talk about the Fed and recessions. And why do I say that? Well, um, I listened to a, one of Greg Manorino's uh, YouTube videos the other day, and he was talking about, and I hadn't noticed that, I didn't see, uh, there was a Fed official, a uh, vice chairman, uh, Stanley Fisher, on Sunday, he actually said that, uh, you know, the, the economy faces a lot of uncertainty, uh, you know, going ahead. And Greg Manorino uh, rightly noted that that that's kind of code word for you know don't worry markets uh, we're gonna keep a you know monetary accommodation uh, as long as we can and that's why you know the Dow did so you know was up over a hundred points on Monday I think you know broke through tw you know approaching twenty thousand five hundred and. Uh, and then we we get Janet Yellen yesterday though, kind of saying, not really giving uh, the markets uh, too much slack, saying that we could you know uh, we need to the Fed will need to raise rates. Uh, they can't wait too long because if they do, they'd have to raise rates a lot quicker eventually. And then that's when gold went from twelve thirty four to twelve twenty four. You know, she spoke, uh, but, you know, Yellen is like a, a little chihuahua, you know, they keep barking and barking and, but they're not scary. Um, you know, they have some kind of impact in the short term. And uh, with that, I'd like to bring up this chart and it's from the Federal Reserve themselves, St. Louis Fed to be exact. And here's a chart of the effective federal funds rate. That's the rate that the Fed still targets with their monetary policy. And it's all the way back to 1954, July 1954. And uh, you can see there, there's some gray lines coming down, columns coming down along the chart. Those are periods of uh, recessions. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, whenever the re a recession starts, Prior to the recession starting, you can see that the Fed funds rate uh, went up. Look at, uh, you know, in the 19, late 50s, Fed funds rate went from near uh, around 1% to uh, above around 4% there. And then it plateaued, but then the recession started and they had to cut rates again. And then throughout the 60s, uh, you know, rates crept up. I don't think the Fed uh, target Fed funds rate at that time, but uh, anyway, it crept up and you can see it topped almost at 10% uh, just around 1970. And then you had a recession, the, the rates dropped again, the recession ended, and then rates went up again, uh, and the recession started in 1974-75, rates went down, and then in the around 77 you know that rate went from five all the way almost up to 20 and you had a double kind of they call double dip recession whatever you know uh, early 80s uh, 1980 1982 there and uh, you can see the recession ended after rates dropped from a near 20 to about uh, almost back seven and a half and then all the way to the early 90s, there was no recession, you know, rates had gone up uh, just around 89, uh, 90, and it took a while for the recession to come along. Rates went down that, you know, all the way uh, almost to two and a half percent. And then in 1994, you can see their rates went up uh, and there was no recession, but there was a huge a bond market uh, crash. I remember I was in the markets at that time. So, you know, looks like Greenspan there, when he saw that, he, he actually started cutting again, and then it plateaued and went down, you know, until late 90s. Uh, and then it went up again, ju just around 2000, and then there's a recession. And then it went down again, 
As you can see, Greenspan took rates to 1%. And then he, you can see from just before 2005, there was, you know, he, there was a the very clear uh, rate, rate hikes for about a year and a half. And I remember that, you know, we knew they're going to raise every meeting. And they telegraphed that quite well. Then it plateaued a bit. But uh, then we had the you know, 08 to 09 recession and they cut rates. Uh, and you can see that since then, for almost 10 years now, rates have been hugging you know, that zero line. You can see that you know, the rate hike in the end of December 2015 and the, the rate hike uh, end of December, uh, middle of December 2016. It doesn't even register on that chart. And you can also see that uh, once the recession's over, the Fed will, you know, allow rates to, to come up again or, you know, target higher rates. But this time they haven't done it. What's wrong? And they keep, you know, they've been telling us for the last six, seven years that they're going to have to raise rates and, and they never do it. Uh, in my opinion, well, to me, they've lost all credibility, of course. And, uh, you know, if, if the economy is doing so well and uh, unemployment is so low, the unemployment, the way they measure it is so low, how come, you know, rates are not back up to two and a half? I mean, two and a half would be still historically low. <laughs> you know, why can't they bring it back up to two and a half? Well, because uh, if they do... Uh, there won't be a, a recession. There will be a huge depression because, you know, they had to throw everything at the, the banks, the financial system, you know, the housing, financing, you know, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, you know, the mortgage bonds. They had to throw everything at it. That's where why the Fed's balance sheet went from $800 billion to $4.5 trillion. And they can't afford to raise rates, but they have to keep coming out and telling people, you know, oh, we're, we're going to have to do it three times a year this year or four times. And then they only do it once by a tiny amount, you know, a quarter of a percent. They have to keep saying, oh, eventually we're going to have to raise rates if we wait too long. But I'm sorry, they've waited too long already. And um, the other thing as well, if a recession does start, where do they cut to? So that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why the stock market, um, you know, continues to go higher because there's a note saying about don't fight the Fed and, uh, the Fed still has the punch bowl out there. It's still very cheap for, uh, the big, uh, multinationals, for the big banks, uh, to borrow and speculate. It doesn't pay to, uh, save and get an income. Uh, so until that happens, I think, uh, you know, we're going to see the, the market still very frothy. Uh, gold and silver, uh, you know, in my opinion, since 2012, 2013, you know, it, it's been kept low because they can't, uh, they, the Fed has to uh, have credibility. You know, they can't keep rates at zero and keep, you know, uh, and allow gold to go up. That, that that would show how fraudulent their monetary policy is. But uh, when will things unravel? Will things unravel? Of course they will. Uh, will it be the Fed, you know, that pulls the punch bowl? Or it probably will, will be. And they'll do it, uh, you know, most of the time when they start uh, raising rates or uh, allowing rates to go up bad things happen uh, and you get recessions and that's why they've been so reluctant to uh, to change uh, you know rates or raise rates so yeah that's it for now uh, I I have been absent for a few days I I have been a bit busy doing other things but don't don't worry I'm not like uh, you know cutting down I am trying to do as much as I can in terms of videos uh, so if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it far and wide. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. If you'd like to donate to my channel, there's some links below in the description. I'll talk to you later. Bye.